John Milligan, Managing Director, Silky Legs, Frederick Street, Leicester, to A.B. Cust, Marbury's Guest House, 1935. Dear Sir, further to our letters dated 5th and 10th of the month, we confirm we are you as door-to-door -door salesman, according to the conditions stated in our previous letters. We will send you the articles by mail and also a Redfield typewriter you will be using for every business letter. Regarding the schedule of your rounds, please do as following. June 21, Andover. Arrive by train the 20th in the evening and get a room at Station Hotel. Start your turn in the north part of the town. This letter establishes that Cust went to Andover, but the ink has hidden the destinations of his other trips. <sighs> I know from Mrs. Marbury that he went to Churston. I just have to show that he went to Bexhill, and I will have proved that he was present at all the crime scenes. A long-bladed knife. A murderer's weapon. This object will probably be useful to me. It's an ABC. Did Cust drop it when he opened the window? Or was it Mrs. Marbury while she was cleaning? Cust is parsimonious. He keeps his pencils and sharpens them until there is nothing left. It is clear that he did not grow up in luxury. I have to get the ribbon. How am I going to do it? The ribbon is jammed. I have to start by freeing it. The left hand heel has been removed. The right hand heel has been removed. And here is the ribbon. Let us see if it was indeed used to write the letters sent by ABC. I only need the ink ribbon for my inquiry. I will let Jack clean the keyboard if he wishes. All the letters announcing the murders were written on Cust's typewriter. How hopeful. This place is a real mess. The least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance.
ABC guys, enough to sign about a dozen murders. It's closed. This knife is very useful. Who knows, maybe it never cut anything other than string. Stockings. All the main articles referring to the ABC case are here, from the Churston murder onwards. Nothing before that date. Most probably the bassing dress repaired by Mrs. Marbury's expert hands. The Bexhill Daily Paper, dated from the day of the Bexhill murder. Trousers, white shirts, everything has been washed very well. It is now the right time. This dark stain, it could be blood, but goodness knows how long it has been there. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The register shows that Cust did not sleep at the guest house on the day of the murder. Where was he? Bexhill. The Bexhill paper reveals it. Cust bought this newspaper in Bexhill on July the 25th. No use continuing the inspection of this room. I've seen all there is to see. Goodbye, Mrs. Marbury. Thank you for your help. I look forward to seeing you again, Mr. Poirot. Ah, Chief Inspector. I was about to leave. Good evening, Chief Inspector. Welcome. Please excuse me. I must go to the kitchen. I'll leave the key of Mr. Cust on the counter. I'm sorry I'm late. I've spent ages with the Doncaster police. And you? I have established one fact. On three occasions, Cust was at the scene on the day of the crimes. I had best talk to Jap. I've listened closely to what you have to say, Poirot. For me, there's no doubt Cust is guilty. Do you have any element that might prove the contrary? That is what we're going to look for. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
The evidence against Cust is overwhelming. His presence at the scenes, the knife, the blood-stained shirt, the ABCs in a box. C'est vrai. However, the blood Mrs. Marbury saw on Cust's shirt may have been his own. According to his medical records, he suffers from hemoptysis. The murderer cut Sir Carmichael's throat from behind, and the blood spurted outwards. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the buttonholes, yet we see quite the opposite. You would expect the murderer to keep the newspaper articles about his crimes. But Cust's collection starts in Cheston, as if it discovered the case rather late. Hmm, I agree it's troubling, but it doesn't change my mind. There's small details that we should be able to clear up by questioning Cust. When can you talk to him? Doncaster is sending him to us on the first train. Are they questioning him already? He says he can't remember a thing. It's plausible. Doctors say he suffers from absences and amnesia. Mrs. Marbury has confirmed this. He may have done the murders in an altered state. A familiar situation. It's not enough to clear his name. Dr. Thompson insisted that even if you don't know what you're doing, you never commit a murder without wanting to. Très intéressant. I shall remember that. Right. I'll go and examine the suspect's room. Chief Inspector, I took the liberty of removing a few clues to examine at home. All right. We'll discuss them tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to see if you've missed something. To Scotland Yard, please. This man is not in good shape. What do you want from me? He is worried and very tired. And other police have been hard on him. What do you want from me? Good day, ABC. Do you know who I am? Someone who's got it in for me. I am Hercule Poirot, and I want nothing other than the truth. Ah, you're the detective. Why did you send me a letter before each crime? Why all these questions? When <laughs> are you going to stop pestering me? <coughs> Take this. It will help you. Thank you. Oh, good God, my shirt is covered in blood again. Bon, I now know where the blood stains Mrs. Marbury so came from. Are you well enough to speak? Yes, I feel much better. Why did you send me a letter before each crime? Why all these questions? When are you going to stop pestering me? Maybe you forgot that you wrote these letters. Yes, it's true. 
Sometimes I forget. Maybe I did type them. Are you capable of murder, Mr. Cust? All these questions are giving me a headache. <sighs> You suffered during the war. It's true. I was wounded. I suffered. But... The army was the only place I didn't feel inferior. No questions. Just orders to follow. But ever since you were wounded, you have absences, bouts of amnesia. And headaches. Professor Clark treated you. Yes, a few years ago he really helped me with my burned throat. But you killed him, as well as two other people. That's what they all say. <laughs> Do you deny being at the scene of the crimes? So? There was no harm in being there. It was only for my work. You were seen at all the crime scenes. Yes, I was. I travel a lot. But not for pleasure. I am terribly unwell in trains. But I had to respect my engagements. My employer gave me very precise written instructions about the towns I had to visit. <coughs> Let's see. The company you claim to work for, Silky Legs, has never heard of you. And as for these letters they sent you, they were written on your own typewriter. The company sent me the typewriter when I started working for them. Yes, but the letters were received afterwards. So it would appear that you typed them before sending them to yourself. I... I don't remember. Good God! I don't know what's happening to me. My head hurts terribly. Take this. It will help you. Oh, I think I'll be fine. Let us see, Cust. Look at me. You know very well that you committed these murders? Yes, I know. But I'm not wrong in saying that you do not know why you committed them. No, I don't. And what conclusions have you drawn? Plenty. It might help us to understand him a little better. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
I don't see any clearer than before. This is worse. There is one point, Twilight. C'est curieux. Cast admits that he killed, but he does not know why. What did Dr. Thompson say? Even if Cast killed while in an altered state, it still must have been his deepest desire. He must have had a motive. Let's keep it simple. Never mind his motive. He confessed. But you see, he can confess to anything and everything. He denied the murders and then he confessed to them. He confirmed that he never typed the letters. Then, with great ease, I managed to get him to say quite the opposite. Come on, he behaved like a guilty man. He lied to his landlady. Because deep down he believes himself guilty. From the papers, he noticed that he had always been at the scene of the crimes. He must think that he killed and then simply forgot what he had done. How can you be so sure? Let us look at his psychological profile. You will understand my point of view. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. You see, Cus' character is quite the opposite of the murderers. But if he's a madman, can we really talk about his character? You know very well that how murderer does not behave like a psychopath. Apart from the signature, there is no ritual repetition in the choice of victims. Very well, very well. You're right as always. So we have no confession, no culprit, no suspects, nothing, and all that after two months of inquiry. What should I do? Have faith. Just give me twenty-four hours.